What's up guys, Jay Vincent here. So what is sarcoplasmic hypertrophy? If you've been in the fitness community, especially the bodybuilding community, you've probably heard this term and have probably been exposed to workouts that target or optimize sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. So what is it? Can you train for sarcoplasmic hypertrophy? How do you train for sarcoplasmic hypertrophy? Well, I'm gonna explain all that and give you a detailed explanation. Before I do that, please hit the like and subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you can be notified when I drop more science-based exercise and nutrition tips. Okay, so sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, what is it? So basically, in a nutshell, you have intracellular fluid in your muscle cell called sarcoplasm. And sarcoplasmic hypertrophy is referred to the increase in this intracellular fluid, thus expanding the muscle cell. While this does happen as a result of training, it is not a chronic adaptation, meaning it is not a type of hypertrophy that remains long term. This is an erroneous belief being pushed in the fitness industry that you can train for sarcoplasmic hypertrophy versus the other type of hypertrophy, myofibrillar hypertrophy, which I will describe in another video. But it is, uh, it is a wrong belief that you can train for this type of hypertrophy because it's not even a chronic adaptation to begin with. You cannot increase intracellular um, fluid without increasing the intracellular contractile proteins. So I'm gonna explain how sar sarcoplasmic hypertrophy happens so that way you can understand how it cannot be a chronic adaptation. So in your muscle cells, um, so basically what happens is when you start placing heavy demand on your muscle, on your metabolism, your muscular metabolism, by loading it continuously and placing a demand on it, cellular respiration is going to be working as hard as it can. Anaerobic metabolism, uh, aerobic metabolism, they're gonna be churning really, really hard, trying to get glucose in, substrate in, and turn it into ATP. So when you're placing a, a super high demand on your muscle, you are pushing anaerobic and aerobic metabolism so hard that it's gonna generate a lot of byproducts called metabolites, namely lactate, or most people refer to as lactic acid, that burning feeling. So lactate or lactic acid is a result of anaerobic metabolism. So when you turn, when your uh, cell tastes glucose and generates ATP from it, it's left with pyruvate. Sometimes you build up way too much pyruvate that the aerobic metabolism can use. So what your body does is converts the pyruvate into lactate, lactic acid. That's why you get that burning feeling. So the increase in these uh, metabolites, such as lactate, cause an increase in what's called extracellular water. So this is the, the water between the cell membrane and uh, the space between the cells. So you've got your muscle cells like this. And an increase in extracellular water is stimulated by an increase in these metabolites. So basically what happens is the space in between the cells here increases in water, basically to deliver more water and nutrients to the cell. So when this happens, the nutrients will permeate the cell membrane, carrying some water with it, and thus cause an expansion, a relatively rapid expansion in the in the uh, muscle cell itself due to an increase in the amount of intracellular fluid or intracellular water. So basically what happens is your body recognizes the cell needs some nutrients because you're placing a huge demand on it. So the amount of water in between the cells increases in order to deliver nutrients to the cell. The water and the nutrients go into the cell and then the cell swells. This is called cell swelling. So this is simply a result of pushing metabolism hard or metabolic stress. But here's the thing, when these cells will swell only temporarily, and it's simply to place, uh, to deliver to the cell what it needs during this stressful environment you place it in. Over time, your the intracellular water and the extracellular fluid, they will reach an equilibrium over time. So while this cell expanded, after you you're done placing a demand or the stress on the muscle, the intracellular water will, you know, this extracellular water will decrease, therefore,
causing a decrease in the intracellular water and a decrease in the cell swelling. So as you can tell, this only happens temporarily when you're pushing cellular metabolism really hard. You cannot train in a way that constantly produces or leaves extracellular water and therefore leaves extra fluid inside of the cell. It is physiologically impossible. So you should be training in a way with an adequate set duration and an adequate time under load to you know, produce enough metabolites, which is going to, you know, over, over time, uh, stimulate the mTOR pathway and stimulate an increase in myofibrillar hypertrophy, but you're not going to get this as a chronic adaptation. This only comes along with a side effect of metabolic stress. So you've probably heard the term the muscle pump. Well, there is some validity too, um, if you are getting a pump in the gym, you are likely, you know, getting enough metabolic stress to stimulate an adaptation. But if you were relatively dehydrated or don't have much muscle glycogen because you haven't been eating much glucose or carbs, you're going to have less of a muscle pump and less of this swelling, but you could still very likely be stimulating myofibrillar hypertrophy through mechanical tension and even, you know, still through the metabolic stress pathway. So, that is why sarcoplasmic hypertrophy is not a type of chronic or long-term hypertrophy. As you can see, it's pretty much physically impossible. Um, but you should be training in a way that does emphasize metabolic stress because the metabolic stress, the metabolites, the lactate, all these things will influence a, uh, will stimulate myofibrillar hypertrophy, which is actually an increase in the contractile proteins in the cell, which is a long-term chronic adaptation. So that's sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. There's no way to train for it. And anyone who says that there is just has no idea what they're talking about. They don't understand cellular respiration or muscle physiology for that matter. So that's it. If you have any questions about that and how all that works, go ahead, drop a comment in the comment section below. I might get to it. Um, if you haven't already and you want a workout which places a high demand on the muscle, emphasizes metabolic stress and therefore adaptations to training, go ahead and try my high intensity training home workout. The exercises are designed with adequate set duration to optimize metabolic stress, metabolites, and the entire adaptive response. The link is going to be below. And uh, follow me on Instagram underscore J underscore Vincent for more science based exercise, nutrition, and training tips.